Hey guys, today you are going to get a white sheet of paper, and that should be all you need from your teacher. So you're going to put your name on the back, Mr. Calvert, okay. uh, put your class code, um, like if you're in third grade, Mrs. Kelleher's class, you're going to put a 3K, okay, um, just get that written down so we know who's in which class. All right, flip it over, and today we are going to start off by drawing the window for our Jim Darling drawings. Um, I'm just going to show you how to draw the window and I'll show you some of my examples, but I'm not going to walk through like drawing a bunch of different landscapes. All right, so when I start, I'm going to start with two vertical lines. Vertical lines are ones that go up and down. So I'm going to go one. I'm going to put them pretty far apart, pretty close to the edge. That way it gives me more space to draw. Two. Okay. Next, I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to round it over to the other side like a rainbow up over down i gotta do the same on the bottom down over back up okay so that's the outside edge of my window next i'm gonna go from this corner to this corner and i'm gonna go around it going down kind of like this line that i did right here except this time it's gonna go up here Okay. This is going to be actually be the part where you pull down the window. And to make it kind of look like the handle on a window, it's kind of like a Nike swoosh sign. I'm just going to do something like this. If you want to round this side, you could. Okay, That's like the handle, so you can actually hold that window. Next, I'm going to do a line um, just to the right of this. I'm going to go one, down so it's even, then two. Okay, I gotta do the same on the other side. One, two. And then I have to connect these, kind of like what I did here. So I'm gonna start with this one, I'm gonna curve down, over, back up, down, over, back up. Okay, so there is my plane window. Now when I go to color this, I'm going to use a black. Okay, I'm going to trace it first. Trace the entire thing and then I'm going to show you how to shade it so it actually looks like it has 3D. In art, we call something that's 3D or something that looks like it's 3D, form. Okay, we're going to give this window form so it doesn't look flat. All right, so I have my window trace. I should probably also mention too, you're probably gonna wanna use crayons or colored pencils for this. I probably wouldn't use markers if I were you because it's gonna be kind of hard to shade things. It's gonna be kind of hard to um, change the value or make things lighter or darker. Okay, so I have my window outlined. Next, I need to make it look like it's 3D. So inside this handle up here, I'm gonna add just a little bit of a shadow. So I'm just gonna kinda go back and forth to kinda thicken that up a bit. Next, I'm going to do, there's typically a shadow right underneath this because this um, chunk on top actually kind of overhangs the window a little bit. So I'm going to go from this line all the way to the other edge. Just kind of going back and forth. I don't have to press super hard. Like that. A little bit of a shadow. Next, I'm going to go from this line over to this line. Not quite all the way over. I need to do one more shadow line for the top of this window. This time I'm gonna go from this line to this line. Okay, so I keep just moving in a little bit. All right, so I got my window shadow. Next, I need to add a shadow down the side. And to do this, I am going to start on this line right here. I'm going to add a shadow going down the side into about the middle down here. So same thing, just kind of lightly color. I'm just kind of going back and forth right along that line. There's one. Two. 
Open it on this one, two. I gotta do it on one more, that inside part of the window. And three. Okay, so once you get that far, you are done with the window part of it. Okay, so I start off by drawing kind of those one, two, three vertical lines on this side, three vertical lines on this side. Got to do the curve on the top and bottom. And then remember, this curve is going to go down. That's the part of the window you pull down, then these three. Okay, once you get that drawn, add your handle, add your shadows, and then you're ready to rock and roll on the adding a landscape. Now think about what kind of landscape do you want to draw. You could draw a place that you've been. You could draw a place that you'd like to go. Okay, it's up to you. Um, here's one that I drew of Egypt. You can recognize the pyramids. Uh, when I drew these, I actually made sure to make my pyramids look like they were 3D. So I drew a triangle, then this diagonal line. Um, that helps make it look 3D, as well as giving it a little bit of a shadow. So I gave this um, pyramid a form. Okay, it has form. It looks like it's 3D. Something else that I did when I was coloring was notice my clouds. Okay, the big clouds are up high. The little clouds are down low. If you ever look out at the sky, typically clouds that are closer to the horizon, this is your horizon, okay? It's where the sky touches the ground. Clouds get smaller the closer they get to that horizon. So I went smaller, I got a little bit bigger and bigger and then bigger. That helps create space, okay? Another way I created space was this pyramid is bigger than this one. This pyramid's bigger than this one. We learned at the start of our um, first video that things get smaller the further away they get. Um, here's another one I did of some mountains. Once again, I gave the mountains a shadow. This one's a little bit harder to see because all the grays. But I gave the mountains some shadows. Also notice too, this mountain in the front, okay, it's darker. And then it gets a little bit lighter. You know, this is kind of like a medium gray color. And then these ones way back here, these are really light. One, two. Okay, we talked about how color, or as things get further and further away, they start to get lighter and lighter and lighter until they disappear. Same as with my sky, too. Notice how the sky, the lower, the closer it is to that horizon where the ground meets the sky, it's typically bluer. And then the higher up it gets, it actually gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Um, I did the same right here, too. Hold up. Don't listen to what Mr. Calvert just said. Turns out that I made a mistake when I was coloring my sky. So I actually colored mine so it was um, more blue at the bottom towards the horizon and it got lighter as it went up. That should have been flipped, okay? It's actually supposed to be really blue at the top and then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it gets closer to the horizon. Here's just a couple examples of that, okay? So it's really blue along the top. As it gets closer to that horizon, notice how the colors change. It gets super duper light right here. Um, here's another example of that. Really nice bright blue up towards the top. Gets lighter and lighter and lighter. So even though I messed that up on my artwork, okay, don't do that on yours, okay? Blue up at the top, gets lighter as it gets to the bottom. Okay. And then I got one more for you. This was some trees that I did to try to make it kind of look like a field. So this one, what I did is I put a little dot on the horizon and then I drew diagonals going out to that dot. And that's another way to make things look like they disappear. And notice too how I changed the size of those as they got further and further away. I went from big tree to medium to little to really small. Okay, so think about all those things when you are working on these. Okay, think about the places you want to go. So maybe a city. Remember to think about making the buildings bigger and smaller. You go to Paris to see the Eiffel Tower, the Statue of Liberty in New York City. Uh, maybe the mountains or the ocean. Think about different ways that you can use space and value, okay, changing colors and form, making things 3D to create a landscape, all right? Can't wait to see these when they're done, guys.